Hi everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from the Sister the Word community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us on this Thursday, August 4th. And on this day in the church, we celebrate a very special saint, Saint John Mary Vianney. The name of this French priest may be unfamiliar to many, but his title is known around the world, the Cure of Ars. He was born in 1786 near Lyons, France. At the age of 20, he enrolled in school but found studying difficult. Having learned the rudiments of theology, John was ordained in 1815. In 1818, John became the parish priest of the little village of Ars and Doms, where most of the people were not interested in religion or God. He spent the rest of his life serving the parishioners of this village. A renowned confessor, he was visited by hundreds of pilgrims every day hearing confessions for 12 to 16 hours daily. When he walked, when he walked from the confessional to the rectory, pilgrims would cut pieces from his clothing and his hair. For 30 years, he served all who came to him. People were healed and converted, and many were given appropriate words of wisdom and advice, even before they had explained their predicament. When he died in 1859, at the age of 73, John Vianney already had the reputation of being a saint. He was canonized in 1925 and is patron of parish priests. A very special saint, a saint that is a patron of our parish priests. He himself was a parish priest that in a place where people were not interested in faith, the only thing he did was to be in his church and start listening confessions. And by listening to people, he helped people to convert. And a great number of people is starting going after him to listen to his advices and to grow in holiness. That's how special this saint is, St. John Mary Vianney. Let us pray to him for our priests. Let's ask that St. John Vianney pray and intercede for our priests today. May all of them be holy as St. John Vianney. First reading today from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 to 34. Let's get started with the reading of the Word of God. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, thought I was Though it was their husband, says the Lord, but it is the covenant that will make but sorry, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another. Or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, God is promising to forget the peop to forget the wrongdoings of the people and to forgive his people. God promises to each one of us to forget all the wrong we have done, to forgive us and to say, sin no more, come to me, believe me, be with me. Yes, you betrayed me like a wife betrays her husband. But I'm here. I bring, ever I bring everlasting love to you. I bring a love that you will never find anywhere else. I will always be here. Just trust me. 
I will make your house like the, the days of old, like the days of your great prosperity. Just be with me. Just trust me. Just love me. I will put my law within you. I will write it in your heart. And I will be your God and you will be my people. What a beautiful promise from God. I will write my laws within your heart. That's all we need to have the Lord's word within our hearts. And remember, every time that you hear and you re read law in the Bible, say word of God, sacred scripture. He wants to write his sacred words within our hearts so we can keep it and we can always be with him, always be united with him. Responsorio today, Psalm 51 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. For you have no delight in sacrifice, and if I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Broke and contrite heart, O oh God, you will never, never despise. So let's come to God with broken and contrite hearts. He will always welcome us. And the gospel is from St. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 23. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against you. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah, the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Get behind me, Satan. That's a strong sentence that Jesus told Peter. Get behind me. Don't go in front of me. Get behind. What does that mean? Jesus says, For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Every time that we do not set our minds on, on the divine, on God, saying, God, lead me, guide me, Help me to go through everything in life, good and bad, difficult and easy. Every time that I set my mind on earthly things, only wanting an easy life, a blessed life, a life with no difficulties, I am acting like the evil one, like the enemy of God. Life is not easy. And after sin, after the first sin, life was never meant to be easy. When it says, you will labor, 
you will go through pain. There in Genesis, back in Genesis, we heard that. Since the beginning, it says, since that happened, it says, life will be difficult. When God created the earth and men and women, he blessed, blessed men and women and creation and said, go and multiply. But after sin, life is difficult. And when we are against it, we are acting like Satan, like the one who is the enemy of God, who does not accept suffering. We need to accept what comes our way. Jesus explained the disciples that he had to suffer. He had to go through so, through so many things, but he was going to resurrect. But Peter did not understand it and had his mind set on earthly things saying, that never happened to you. May that never happen, Lord. What are you talking about? Jesus says, no, Peter. When you think like this, you are acting like the enemy. So get behind me. Learn from me, for I have a pure heart. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Even suffering with me will be light if you set your mind on the heavenly things, on divine things. On this day, let's, let's learn from Peter's example. Peter, great apostle, loved Jesus so much that did not want nothing bad to happen to Jesus. But that was not the point. Jesus needed to go through what he did to save us. We need to go through a lot of sufferings and pain many times to save ourselves, to save others, and to share the suffering of Christ. Christ gives us the ability to be with him, to suffer with him. But with the hope and the certainty of the resurrection at the end. Today, let's set our minds on the divine things. Let's not, be set, let's not set our goals and minds on earthly things. Amen.